So we've run one of the biggest 3D print farms on the planet. And the question that still comes up is, is it scalable? The answer is yes, but let's break that down a little bit more. So scalable means a lot of things, but most of the time people just say, is it competitive with injection molding? Well, I don't know in your particular case, but on average, 3D printing is more affordable than injection molding up to 100,000 parts. And that's for something like the size of your fist, give or take a little bit, depending on your context. If you change the design a little bit and really optimize for 3D printing, then there are cases where printing is never more expensive than molding. And you also have the tremendous benefit of never having to buy the mold. With molding, you have to buy the mold, which is a $50,000 investment, and then you get your first part, at which point you find out you screwed something up, which means you have to rework the mold. With printing, you're able to order one part, 100 parts, 1,000 parts, and instead of spending all of the mold cost to get one part and one try, you can spend chunks of the mold cost to iterate and learn and grow and evolve the product, and then you can go up to production, because your prototype is your production model. There's no separation of the process of translating from here to there. So yes, printing has the scale that you need to cost effectively and at large volumes produce whatever parts you need. Now, how is that actually doable? How, how does that work? Because not everybody, people send different messages out there. Well, the way we get it done is by just having a lot of machines. Inside of the Slant 3D print farm, we have one single machine multiplied hundreds of times. So people often point to like the cycle time. Oh, an injection molding machine can make one of those parts every 15 seconds. That's true, and that is faster than 3D printing. It might take an hour to print that type of part with a printer. Who cares? All we have to do is say, okay, it takes 15 seconds per part, four parts per minute. Um, okay, so 240 parts per hour is how fast the molding goes. Okay, fine, so we need 240 machines. Well, our mega farm's spec'd out for 3,000, so we can probably find that. And that's in a worst case, but that's not the full lead time of a mold or traditional manufacturing. Once you have it manufactured, generally it has to be shipped. It has to be packaged. You have to wait in line for your mold to be put on the machine. The individual part cycle time has very little to do with the lead time. Now our factory is based inside the United States, so very often we're closer, but we still have to ship some distance, but we're not shipping across an ocean. And since our machines are able to transition from one part to the next very quickly, you're not having to wait for a machine to come available. We're also just more reliable. This structure makes sure that we don't have a single point of failure. So you're weeding out the delays of, oh, that machine's down. We can't make your parts for a couple weeks until spare parts for us show up. No, a machine goes down. Who cares? Now the next question that people always bring up is quality. And quality is so closely linked to the actual design itself. If you attempt to 3D print a part that you made for injection molding, you very likely will be disappointed. That is because it's a square peg in a round hole. They are not the same process and they're not even meant to be complementary processes. They're just pigeonholed together. But if you design a part for 3D printing, you design it to be printed on an edge, you apply a texture to it, you pick good materials that are able to support it well, and you understand how printing works so that you don't try to have a lot of support material in it, you can create very high quality parts that can be used in premium products inside of retail like perfume, or you can build industrial robot arms that can be worth millions of dollars. You can produce any part that you want, but you have to understand what you're using. The QC and quality control can all be controlled. The tolerances can all be refined. There are limitations there, absolutely. There's limitations with every process. But when given the option to mass produce a product, you have molding machining, so on and so forth. But printing should be added to it. It should be part of the conversation because very often printing can do it. And printing has the scale has the quality and has the ability to create all kinds of things that are equivalent to those other processes. But now, if you really want the X factor, printing has all kinds of new capabilities that allow you to create a product that never existed before, create new competitive advantages that you never had before. So now you have financial incentives to where you not only break loose more cash flow at the beginning because you don't have a mold, you're able to piecemeal parts out more closely and get them faster because you don't have shipping and tool up costs and those kind of things. But now you're actually able to create 
original and unique products with new capabilities so that you can sell more and be competitive. You get out of the commodity that all of your competitors are using and create something entirely new. So is printing scalable? Yes, yes it is. Just make sure that you use it. Don't try to plug and play your old styles into it. That's like trying to shove a record player into the side of a computer. It's kind of silly. But if you're able to get a hold of a CD-ROM, and maybe even a flash drive if you're real fancy, to understand what it is you're trying to do, now you can do something really awesome. Have a great day, everybody.